today we're going to be talking about one of the brand new features within Photo Lab 4, and uh, we're going to go right in depth into it. So what's what's fun about this kind of webinar is usually we're doing a uh, you know like a once over where we can't go in depth into a whole bunch of different things that you could do with a particular tool. Because a lot of the tools within PhotoLab, we could probably talk about for 45 minutes and, and discuss, you know, different potential things that you could use to think about, to, um, you know, know and understand how sliders work and so on and so forth. And that's what today is going to be about. We're going to we're going to get into what watermarks are, uh, a couple examples of when to use them. Um, you know, this is kind of a polarizing topic as well. Some people love watermarks, some people don't love watermarks. Um, there's definitely a time and a place for them, and we'll talk about some of those. Uh, in the feature, or in the tool palette, there uh, is the ability to add texts and or logos slash images uh, on top of your photos for watermarking. I'll show you that. And then um, we're going to talk about some of the different options of blending modes. We'll discuss what blending modes are and how to apply watermarks on a single image as well as on a series of, of photographs. Okay. so. Um, here are three of the different examples of using watermarks. Um, in this case, this is this uh, Madame Turpeau. I'll talk a little bit about the brand as we get into, you know, why we would use this kind of feature um, to overlay branding on top of a photograph and how you can do that within PhotoLab. Um, this is an example of um, sort of using watermarking for proof purposes, and that is for security purposes. And then another good use of watermarking is just for branding purposes and also for creating like banner images. So uh, oftentimes if you wanna put an image up online, whether it's a series of images or it's on your Facebook or website, or it's an introduction to a um, group of images, you can overlay text on top of, as well as images on top of your photos using this watermarking tool. Um, and the watermark tool is over here on the right side of the interface. We're going to go in depth into how it works. Um, but I guess the first thing is we should probably talk about those uses a little bit more. And um, for that, we're going to go ahead and create this kind of proof copy um, image overlay. So I'm going to jump over into our photo library here in Photo Lab 4, and I've got this image kind of ready to go in a project. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom using projects in my Photo Lab. I'll just click on that, that uh, folder in the project section, and we'll click on the original RAW file here. So uh, one issue, and if you've run into this, you already know, you're aware of this, but some folks don't really think about this sort of thing. If you're selling images, and you're selling them whether they're portraits or you're photographing events or um, anything like that where you've got you know specific images, let's say of specific people or something happening in time, um, it doesn't hurt to watermark images so that you can send them out to your clients or potential clients to look at the photographs, but it, there's a deterrence in terms of them just taking that image that you've sent and using it for something. Right, so creating these watermarks can be helpful in that regard. Now, as far as uh, security goes, if you will, as we jump over into the customize section of the interface, uh, as, as far as security goes, a watermark isn't an end-all, be-all. Um, there are other capabilities of digital imaging, like using your um, IPTC metadata and putting your copyright right into the metadata of the image, which can be a helpful deterrent from people taking your, your images and using them without permission, um, and then making it a little bit more traceable if they were to do that. Um, but these watermarks are a really good way of, of kind of keeping honest people honest, you know? Um, so here's what we'll do. We, we've clicked on the image. Um, I probably would crop this down. There's maybe a little bit more space on the right side than is necessary. There's, there's also some, some other post-processing that we might do on this photograph, but let's, let's start by making a watermark um, preset. And with that preset, we're going to be able to place this watermark on 20 images, 100 images, however many photographs we need to very quickly upon exporting our images from PhotoLab uh, to our disk or to wherever we might be exporting our images. So on the right side of the interface here, 
there's uh let's just walk through all of the tools and then I'll show you how to use them. First thing is this drop down menu where you've got presets. And right now I only have one preset built into my photo lab. I'm going to show you how to make some, so we're going to add some in here. Uh but if I go ahead and just click on proof Zapfino gray overlay, I I've, I've tried to name it with the text so if I click on that overlay, or that rather the preset, what's going to happen is it's going to say proof on it, and then I literally, when I saved my uh, when I saved my watermark as a preset, I saved it with the typeface that I'm using, the color, and the blending mode that I'm using, which these are all features that are inside of this tool. But the reason I was so explicit with naming the uh, the the preset is so that when I'm exporting my images, I know exactly what's gonna happen. So, and I'll show you what that means. But I've got my preset. Uh, I'm actually gonna go ahead and um, delete what we're doing here, but um, right now we're using a text overlay for our preset, and it literally just says proof, right? We could also put images on our uh, watermark, or as a watermark, and we'll do that. But for now, we're gonna stick with the text. Now, underneath the, the text dialog, you have where it says uh, the, the type that you're actually going to overlay here. So right now it says proof, but I could write uh, my name, Dan Hughes, and then when I go ahead and um, make some kind of other adjustment, let's say to scale, or to, uh, if I switch between image and text, uh, it's gonna update that type for us, right? And so, for, for security purposes in this situation, I would run with the word proof, right? Um, in that way, it's it's sort of like a, not an international sign necessarily, but uh, a lot of folks are gonna know that if, if somebody is using this image and it says proof on top of it, it's a stolen photograph, basically, right? Uh, it, the idea here is that we're gonna be able to show our clients these images and um, they're not gonna, use them without permission or without purchasing them if that's the idea okay so i'm leaving proof here uh the next dialogue is a pop-up menu or drop down menu and this is going to be containing any typefaces any fonts if you will uh that that are on your hard drive that are on your computer so anything that's loaded and is a proper typeface slash font uh, is going to be accessible here within this drop-down menu. And one of the interesting parts is on the on the left side, it's going to be the title of that typeface, and then on the right side, it'll actually be a representation of your text, right? So um, this is this is quite nice in this regard. Uh, so let's say we wanted to go with something like Gil Sans, nice sans serif. Right, it's a little less dressy, but um, it's a it's a nice typeface for something like this. Uh, from there, once you've chosen your typeface, you can choose, depending upon the typeface that you're using, you can actually use a different font, if you will, or, or a different uh, way of displaying your typeface. You can have it bold or ultra bold, and so on. Now, this drop down menu. So if you're following along and you're using, you know, if you're overlaying. Uh, text on top of your images right now. This drop-down menu is going to be specific to the typeface that you're using. Not all of your typefaces are going to have these different fonts like this. Not, they're not all going to be able to be regular or light or italic and so on and so forth. So, um, you, you know, note that because I think, let's say if I switch back to Zapfino, that, that sort of like um, handwritten sort of style, and then I click on regular, I only have the regular sort of typeface there. I can't change it to something else. And it just pertains specifically to the type that you're choosing to overlay. All right, so I've landed on Times New Roman, nice classic typeface. Uh, let's go with italic in this case. And then uh, we can underneath, or, or actually, I'm sorry, to the right of the um, font there, you can go and choose your color. Let me change something really quickly though, because what I just realized is that I've already messed with my blending mode for this example. And I wanna show you what this would look like as we change this. Because right now we've just adjusted our typeface and then um, you know which version of that typeface we're using. If we move to the right side, uh, we can actually choose our color as well. So uh, we're gonna choose a different color overlay here. And what I've done is I've just switched it from just being straight white to a kind of bluish gray tone. But here you can go and choose any color you might want. And actually choosing a color might be more of a deterrent as well 
you know, if I put like this green overlay on top of these skin tones, it's going to be much more noticeable, uh, basically no matter what. Uh, I would say if you're going to be using this as a sort of deterrent um, for theft, that there's there's some different approaches. In this case, we're we're literally adding proof here so that we can uh, sort of prevent folks from um, you know seeing the image and then just using the photograph. But if you do that, you also probably don't want to just place it directly over people's faces because it's really hard to see. Or if you do place it directly over someone's face, I'm going to close the color. Um, you change the opacity or the blending mode. Before we get to those, let's talk about the different positions that we can place this in. So uh, to the right of the color swatch that we have there, we have the ability to rotate our type. So you can put it in any sort of orientation you'd like, and then you can place it in different places using the grid here. Uh, as you change the position in the grid, you'll also get a different option depending upon where you place the, the feature. So if I place it in the lower left corner, I actually get two new sliders. I get a slider that allows me to adjust um, the bottom margin and the left margin. And I just want to, we'll walk you through those, but I want to show you what happens if you click through some of these different um, positions in the, in the grid. If you place it on the left or the right middle grid, all you can do is adjust the right to left margin, right? Because what it wants to do is center your, uh, your watermark for you and then it allows you to sort of pull it off of the side by adjusting, let's say, the right margin. If you place your watermark directly in the middle, you don't have any choice. It just places it right in the middle, right? And so that can be really nice if it needs to be just quick and easy like that, done, cool. Uh, but I would say in this situation, I don't want to overlay this like directly on the entirety of her face um, and covering up her eyes and so on. So what I might do if we do want to make this right in the middle is I would maybe place it on the bottom and then uh, take my bottom margin and just bring this up so that I'm blocking less or not all of the face. So, so uh, folks can get a sense of the smile and a sense of the picture and so on uh, without it blocking maybe the most important aspects of, um, of the image, but still blocking some of the important aspects to kind of deter that potential, you know, theft or, or whatever the reason might be. All right, so uh, we've got our position down. We've adjusted our bottom margin. I kind of skipped over scale, but this is literally the size. So you can scale it up and scale it down depending upon what you'd like. And then moving into our blending modes, I'm gonna walk you through what these blending modes are in, in depth later on in the webinar. But for now, what we're gonna call these are a way of blending the type or the image um, on top of your photograph. So if I go to the blending mode and I set it to um, multiply, now I, again, I'm gonna tell you what these things are actually doing a little bit more in depth later on. But if I set it to multiply, now I can actually see through some of those, well, I can see through all of the text now, but it still says proof, right? And so this can be a really great way of um, yielding a good result, still keeping your type on an image, but um, making it a little less noticeable because now you can actually see through that text to see the pixels underneath. It's blending the text pixels with those bottom pixels. Uh, there are uh, several, seven to be uh, exact, blending modes that you can choose from. And like I said, later on in the webinar, we're actually going to go in depth as to uh, what each one of those is really doing, at least for the most part. Just a brief overview. Instead of going really technical, we'll just kind of discuss what they're doing. Um, okay, so with the blending mode uh, set to multiply, I can also, or set to any blending mode, really, uh, you can adjust the opacity. And the opacity is the overall... Uh, kind of amount, it's the volume, if you will, of the uh, overlaid watermark. So if I'm going to set this back to normal for just a second so you can see. At a 100% opacity, you don't see through that type. It's just there on top of the image. But if I start to pull the proof down, or sorry, the opacity down, now I'm able to see through it. Um, but it's uh, still there, it's it's still apparent that this is a proof. And you can even bring this way down because in a lot of situations, it doesn't need to just be like this. You know, you can bring it down to 20, 25% or 15%. It still says proof. It's still a highly contrasted color, 
compared to what the image is of. So it's still pretty noticeable that, um, you know, what, what's going on here. All right. So let's say we love this as a preset and we want to be able to use this later on as well. What we can do is save it as a preset. And to do that, uh, you just click the create new preset button that's underneath and name it. So we're going to click create new na uh, preset and the, you will come up with your own naming convention, I'm sure, for these sorts of things. And you'll have different uses for this than what we're even talking about today. But um, I like to be, you know, kind of precise. And because what's going to happen is I'm going to use this as a as a preset. And then I'm not going to shoot this event for a year. And I want, I'm going to go, go back next year. I'm going to want to be able to use this same preset that we made um, so that A, everything is consistent. And B, it's it's already made. So when I do this stuff, I want to make sure that my um, naming makes some sense. So um, let's let's just call it what it is. So proof, and then it's Times New Roman. <laughs> and uh, I didn't change the uh, the blending mode, but I did change the opacity. So I'll just call this 25%. It's really 26%, but we'll call it 25%. And so next time I want to use this, I know exactly what's going to happen when I click on it. So I'll click OK. And that preset is then going to be saved into our instant watermarking presets here on the right side. So now I've got my two presets that are saved, my Zapfino. So you can see that on there. And then I can switch to my uh, Times New Roman as well. Or whatever other sort of typefaces you might want to use. But that's, that's one use uh, using this sort of capability for security purposes um, or, or, you know, maintaining um the, i guess not letting people steal the image at least without having to do a lot of work to try and get rid of uh those kinds of overlays um that's that's the problem with some kind of watermarks is that uh if it is a deterrent it it actually can be removed um you know with different tricks and software as well but if someone that's the thing if someone's going to do it they're going to do it um and so this is just sort of a way of deterring it uh, in this case. Okay, so um, let's say we wanted to do this same sort of thing, but rather than using a typeface or a text, you wanted to use an image. I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna delete proof. So I'll just go into the type and delete it. And then I'm gonna switch over to image. And the, the last preset, the stuff that we just did is gonna disappear. And this is where, when we're clicked on image, we can actually browse by clicking into the browse button. And then any image that we have on our photo on our hard drive that is, I believe, a JPEG, a PNG file, um, and TIFF files, I believe, can be used for uh, watermarking using the instant watermark here. So one of the things that I've already gone and done is I've created uh, another PNG file that is an array of the word proof, right? Uh, it looks funky right now, but um, the beauty of a PNG file, just for folks who aren't necessarily familiar with that file format, um, is that I can maintain a transparent background, meaning when we when we overlay this proof text on top of the image, it's it's going to be just that type with no uh, background behind it. So I guess I'll just show you. So I've clicked on proof diagonal. I'm going to click open. and uh, right off the bat, the watermark is going to be placed in the lower right corner of the interface of the image itself. So what we're going to do is scroll down, and we're going to scale this up, and then we're going to move it over. So I'm going to uh, bring the right margin over. And the thing is, my example here probably isn't the most beautiful thing that you could make. But this is literally a PNG file that I made in Photoshop, or you could make it in any other piece of software that allows you to um, use text or uh, have, let's say, multiple layers of things, or maybe you acquire it from somebody else. So in this way, we're not necessarily just using the text overlay. We are able to use uh, an image overlay. And I'm going to show you sort of fancier versions or representations of this as well. This is just the same idea as we just covered except we're using an image instead of using text that's built into uh, the Photolab 3 soft, sorry, Photolab 4 software. 
from here though, uh, I've scaled up the image. I've moved it over to sort of be centered on top of our people here. And then we can of course change our blending mode. So maybe I'll change this to overlay. And the, the beauty of the overlay here is, again, you start to see through some of those pixels. Uh, it kind of disappears off of a lot of the white of the background. I'll talk to you about why that's doing that with the overlay blending load. But uh, now we've got our proof on top of the image. It looks relatively professional. Uh, and then if we needed to or wanted to, we could actually go back over to the text watermark and we could add text. So if I wanted to put in uh, let's say my name, Dan Hughes in photography. Oops. There we go. And then uh, just switch that over. I'm going to go ahead and change this to a typeface that I like for my branding, which is Bandino. And I have that on here. It's just going to take me a second, or Bandino. And then I, so in this way, now I have the, the sort of draft image overlay. And then I can also include some of my own branding as well, right? So maybe we'll scale this down. So if it were to be used for some other purpose than what we want, uh, we're kind of able to at least control the fact that our name is on it. Um, and it's just another sort of thought process as to, uh, how to use this tool, and that you, of course, can mix the image overlay with the text overlay. And of course, we can change blending modes and so on and so forth as well. Okay, so moving forward, let's jump into using this for a branding purpose, right? So again, there's all sorts of uses for watermarks. And one nice feature set or, or ability is to basically overlay brands, brand total uh, text or logos, whether it's your photography logo or let's say you're shooting some commercial work and uh, you need to comp this up and show the, the company that you're working for kind of the potential, right? Because if we were to send this image off to a brand, they might not necessarily be happy with it because it, their, their product is showing very small in frame. But by simply doing something like this, you know, of course, you have to think about this one while you're shooting the images ahead of time. But uh, if we go into our image overlay here on the watermark section, and I've got to just navigate to my folder, I have a PNG of the Madame Turpo logo and the typeface there. So I'll go ahead and just click open. And um, it I placed it perfectly. Uh, which is kind of a problem, the default setting is actually going to be more like this. So uh, in this case, I've placed the text on here, sorry, the image on here, and the image is tiny in the lower right corner. And that's because of the way that I made this PNG file. And so that's another thing that, that I, I want you to be careful of, is that when you make these kinds of logo images, you know, maybe you've got a designer who's made your photography logo, and they're sending it to you, and then you try and overlay it and it looks, you know, it, it doesn't show up or you don't see it because it's really small in the lower right corner. Just know that you're probably gonna have to increase your scale, right? And just start with that. I think the default is at one. And so some images are going to be very, very small. This is one of them. So I'm gonna place this in sort of the top center of our image here. We're gonna scale this down a little bit. And then um, from there, I'm able to, because I've placed it in the top center, I can adjust the top margin, which basically means I can move it down and it's directly centered. So now I have, you know, not necessarily a finished refined advertisement for Madame Turpeau, but we have a, a piece that's getting close. And if I send this off to Jennifer, from the brand, I'm going to be able to, you know, she's going to see the potential of the image now and understand, well, okay, this is kind of a cool use. It, it shows the product and then it also shows a logo. Uh, and, you know, if, if they really liked it and it was as refined as they needed it to be, you could send this off. This is an image that's not actually retouched. This is just the raw file. So there's definitely some work to be done on the image. But for our purposes, talking about watermarking, uh, it, it's a nice application of the branding for, for uh, Madame Turpeau. Okay, let's do that one more time, but we're just gonna place it differently on this image. So 
the this image we're sort of thinking about it in terms of like a finished commercial piece you could also um, kind of use this as a proofing concept as well so if i needed to send this off to another brand i have overlaid uh, madame turpo's image right on top so they're not going to use it without um you know at least seeing that the brand is all over and uh jennifer has done a good job of branding this stuff anyways but uh let's go ahead and just find that same image so we're going to navigate i sorry i skipped ahead there i literally just clicked um back into the instant watermarking and i'm anytime you want to turn on one of these uh image watermarks you have to click the browse button right in the window there on the right and that's going to bring up your finder if you're on a mac and on a pc i don't think it's called a finder but it's going to bring up that same capability where you're going to navigate to wherever your image is and then it's going to open up right and in fact this is kind of nice i like how small and in sort of uh subtle this one was uh in the lower right corner but let's say we wanted to place this in the middle and we wanted to scale it up and then what we'll do is adjust the blending mode as well. So we'll sort of stick it right in the middle. There we go. And let's change the blending mode, uh, maybe to screen, see what that does. There we go. So I guess right now could be a good time to just talk about what these different blending modes do. In fact, it's a nice image to do this because blending modes are going to pertain um, to the pixels that you're putting on top of your image, right? So if we set this to the normal blending mode here, you're just going to see whatever the pixels are. It's just the image on top of your image. But there are seven different blending modes there in the watermarking section. Uh, the normal one is, is literally that. It's just the pixels on top of pixels. If we click on multiply, um, what, what happens, we're gonna get a darker result and what happens is basically these base pixels, so the image, we're gonna call the image base pixels, and the top image uh, will just be our top pixels. How about that? Uh, what the multiply blending mode does is it multiplies the, the luminosity, the density of the base pixels with the uh, on top pixels, if you will. And I, what's important to note is you're going to get a darker result, right? So when you use the, the multiply blending mode, you will get a darker result than the original uh, pixels, right? And so if I move, start to move this down, you can actually see some of the pixels interacting differently because of that blending mode. Um, in fact, if we, let's say we stick this in the middle, you can see some of the colors kind of coming through in here. And then if you adjust the opacity, you're still going to get that darker representation, um, but it blends in a slightly different way. Long story short, with multiply, it's, it's literally multiplying the base pixel density and the uh, top pixel density. And what you're gonna get is a darker result overall. If we jump over into, I'm gonna bring the opacity back up, by the way. If we jump over into screen, Screen is kind of the opposite. It actually multiplies the inverse, and therefore you get a brighter representation of your overlay. So this can be great. It, it does make for a subtle kind of overlay. It's not as uh, ob obscure, I'm sorry, it's a little more obscure. It's not as um, obtrusive for the most part. This is gonna depend on the image uh, and, and your logo or your whatever you're putting on top of the, the thing for your watermarking. Um, which by the way, these blending modes exist in a lot of different pieces of software and they all are designed to work in the same way. So uh, the, the result of the screen blending mode is gonna yield you a brighter representation, right? Now, if we click on our blending modes and go to overlay, there, there are four others, overlay, soft light, vivid light, and linear light. Now, the top three, screen, multiply, normal, these are, Normal's normal, right? It's just the pixels on top. Multiply and screen uh, pertain to basically the brightness level, right? When you go into overlay, soft light, vivid light, and linear light, these are actually going to adjust the contrast of the pixels that you're overlaying on top of uh, your base. And, and so what's happening, if I click on overlay, it's kind of interesting. It's actually a mix of the multiply blending mode and the uh, screen blending mode. 
right? So it's the mix of these two in that the overlay blending mode darkens any dark pixels. It multiplies the darker pixels rather, and it screens the brighter pixels. So in that way, you're going to get a higher contrast range. And then you can also see how like the text here, Madame Tropeau, it sort of blends and it, it kind of waxes and wanes based upon the density of the base pixels behind it. Anytime those base pixels are darker than middle gray, the, the result is going to be dark. Anytime that the pixels are lighter than middle gray, like right there on the U, they're going to be lighter. And that's what this overlay blending mode is going to do for us. Soft light um, is very similar to the overlay, except it's usually more subtle. And then linear light and vivid light are also using that same kind of capability. Uh, they, are, they are just going even further. And rather than going too far in depth about any of these, um, note that you just use the one that looks the best for you, right? Uh, it's good to know what these things are doing, but in terms of watermarks, it probably doesn't really matter what, what the in-depth detail is as to what's going on, as long as what you're getting out of that blending mode is what's necessary for uh, your watermark, right? And in this case, we're using it to kind of place this overlay brand so um, it, the image wasn't going to be or isn't going to be used for something. Like um, a lot of times a brand is going to put these kinds of overlays on top of images that they're not going to use uh, so that they don't accidentally go out being used for something, right? It's like a signature of like this image is not for actual use. And then whoever has the access to the archive is going to be able to control that sort of thing. All right, so let's move into another uh, way of using this, right? So uh, there's, of course, 500,000 solutions to all of these things. And I just want to show you a couple different things that you can do with this watermarking tool. So another great way of using this watermark tool might be for uh, introducing a story, right? Or introducing um, your image or your body of images, a, a group of photographs, let's say with your text on top of it or your name on top of it. So in this case, we're going to kind of create a banner image. And in fact, I'm going to I'm going to crop this a little bit more. So I'm going to move into our tools palette on the right side. I'm just going to type in crop and we're going to crop this. And I'm just going to change our aspect ratio to unconstrained. Make sure that my manual correction is on. I'm going to crop this down just a little bit. And then this is going to look a little bit more like a kind of banner image that might be used online. So uh, I'll close that. We are done with our crop. And now we will use a text. So if you had your own, let's say, logo or branding, you probably would do this same thing with an image, right? I'm just going to show you to do it with a text uh, overlay. So I've clicked on text. I'm going to type in my name, Dan Hughes. Oops, I probably capitalized my last name. Photography. And apparently I cannot type. There we go. Uh, Dan Hughes Photography. And then I've got to kind of turn it on here. And it looks pretty good already, but here's where we can go and, and kind of make some adjustments. I think it's a little bit too big, right? So maybe we'll center it. And then I might go to my bottom margin and move it up just a smidge. So it's maybe not directly in the center, but now I've got this nice sort of branded image uh, with my name centered in the image, basically centered in the image. And I can use this uh, for whatever purpose. Again, a banner image online, uh, or possibly to introduce a group of images on, on a, in a gallery on a website or something like that. So it's a nice way of doing that. And it's a different way of thinking about it because the intention isn't necessarily for security purposes, but rather to kind of present this image as, as mine or as, as yours, right? And of course, you can create that as a preset. So I'm just going to go ahead and name this one um, Dan. And then uh, I just want to make sure that my typeface is, is noted. And I'll click OK. Okay, and so now we've got three type or three different water uh, marks that we've presetted. And of course, you can preset um, image watermarks. I've just only done text watermarks so far. So uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about is how to get these images out of uh, Photo Lab 4 with our watermark, right? So let's do it with this image. So let's say I want to export this watermarked image. Uh, 
just directly to my desktop. It, you do the same thing as you normally would do when trying to get an image out of Photo Lab. So you would move into the lower right corner and click on export to disk. If yours says export to software, what you would do is actually click here, the little square with the arrow, and then you can just tell it export to disk instead of export to application because that's those will switch. Okay, anyways, I've clicked on export to disk. I'm going to go through and I'm going to name this. I'm going to make sure it says what it needs to say. So in this case, let's go ahead and just run through it. I'm going to export it as a JPEG. Uh, I'm going to set my quality down. So this actually adjusts the compression of the JPEG. It's a nice way of making a smaller JPEG. Um, and in this case, at 91, it retains really good quality uh, without it being at its maximum size in terms of how large it is on my hard drive, like how much storage it takes up. If I leave this at 100, it's going to look great, but it's a it's going to be three megabytes. If I bring it down to 91 or 90 or 89 or so, um, it's going to yield a good result in the JPEG, but it'll be a two megabyte file instead of a three megabyte file or some something along those lines. It compresses the image. I can't say for sure the file what the final file size is going to be. I'm going to leave my folder as the desktop. Uh, I'll leave my resolution at 96. I'm going to go ahead and size this photo because it's a massive, it's a 36 megapixel image. I'm going to go ahead and size it down for web purposes at 2048 pixels. Um, and then what we're going to do here is I'm going to make sure that this watermark preset is off, right? Because I have a custom preset that we just made, and it's already applied to the photograph. So if this little blue checkbox is on, what's going to happen is I'm going to get that proof, that Fino gray overlay watermark on this image. So we don't want that. I'm going to turn it off. We're going to come back to this in a couple minutes. So now I'm going to leave this at sRGB color space, click the export button. It'll take it a second and it's going to export that image from Photo Lab to uh, our desktop and it should just show up right sort of in the corner. Pardon the state of my desktop. When I readjust the uh, resolution, it also kind of messes up my desktop. But anyways, here's our resulting image. Voila, there it is. So this is really nice. Let's let's do that same thing, but let's do it with a group of images, right? So let's go to this shoot with uh, Miranda and her friends. So uh, I need to jump over into, oh, well, let's do it on these. These are JPEGs. They're already basically sized from the whole shoot. Okay, so uh, we have something like 100 sh images in here. So what we can do, so this is that same shoot. Right, so I think that's, that's basically the same image. Let's say we wanted to deliver these images, but we wanted to make sure that all of them had those um, the the watermark on top of it. I'm not going to export all of them because there's 130, and that's going to take my computer several minutes to do. So we'll just take a group of them. So we, we'll take these six. You could do it on the entire folder. You would just select all of the images that you want, um, and then when you export them you when you export them you actually don't turn on the watermark here if you've made a preset for this kind of grouping of images what you do is you click export to disk and now um, i'm going to put these in a subfolder so i'll just say um miranda and friends oops wow i can't type at all there we go and then um this time we're going to turn on our watermark so by turning on override with preset now I can go ahead and access my different uh, presets that we've created. And as I click Proof Zafino uh, Gray Overlay, that's the one that I had made originally for this shoot, um, I click Export. And Photo Lab is going to generate those, those exported JPEGs, right? And then it's also going to uh, place that watermark on top of this uh, that group. So if I open my folder that it just generated, Miranda and friends, and then we look at those, we have our proofs, right? So we're applying that proof on top of all of those images. And it's as simple as that. So it's a really nice feature to be able to do this. And then the, the beauty of being able to sort of optimize your workflow is you, you can create that preset like that. And then you can just generate it on as many or whatever images you might want to put it on. So it makes it super easy to do. Uh, and it's customizable, which is really quite beautiful. One last thing that I wanna leave you with for the webinar, cause we're coming up on our time, uh, is 
you could use this watermark capability as or for creative purposes. And that is you could overlay uh, images on top of your images, right? We we did that with our branding, but just as a different way of thinking about it, um, I'm just gonna take a, a picture that's on my desktop and we're gonna overlay it on top of this image. So I've got this nice photograph of um, George Eastman, the purveyor of Kodak. We're here in Rochester, so it seems appropriate. Um, I've already scaled this up. So again, you know, when you import your image, oftentimes it's going to show up tiny in the lower right corner there, uh, but you're going to have the ability to scale it back up as you see fit. And then um, what might be fun here is is maybe lowering the opacity, right? So now you have kind of like a ghosted image or potentially changing your blending modes, right? And so it's just, I'm going to go to screen. So it's just a different way of working potentially. And it's a nice little feature and you will probably have much better ideas as to how to potentially apply this kind of thing on top of um, your, your photos. It's just, uh, you can do this because it's literally just giving you the ability to put an image on top of your image and then adjust the opacity. Anyways, uh, that's it for me on time. I think we've covered everything that we needed to talk about. So I'll just jump back into this slide and then Lori, I'll throw it back to you. If we've got any questions, hopefully I can cover them. Yeah, we've got a couple questions. I do want to remind everybody that uh, what Dan is showing you is the PhotoLab 4 Elite version, which includes some of the new features, including the watermarking capability. So if you have the essential version, you might not see it. So just be aware that it's in the PhotoLab 4 Elite version. That's a really um, good point. Yep. Yeah, all right. Okay, here's some questions for you. A uh, bunch of people were asking, can two lines of text be added? Uh, that's a good question. As far as I know, you let's see. I haven't tried it, that. Yeah, and does it wrap automatically? It, it does not wrap automatically. I do know that part. So let's say Dan Hughes, and then if we hit enter, no, it just applies it. So as far as I know, uh, it it doesn't. It's just going to give you one line of text. And in, in in that regard, what you would probably do is you you generate your you know your design somewhere else. This um, doesn't, as far as I know, let you do that. I what I've done here is I typed in my name and then I tried to hit enter to see if that would um, you know go down to the next line. It does not do that. I wonder if we just keep typing. I, I don't think it does that though. I think it just keeps moving on one line. Yeah, those aren't actually words. I just typed in word. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I suppose, Dan, if you did uh, another preset with the second line of text, then you can add both of those, you think? Well, you can only oh. apply one preset at a time. The, you can apply an image preset and a, a text preset. Like you can you can apply a text and an image separately Right, we didn't do that. I can put the word proof on here and then I can go in and I can also add um you know the the branding. But I'm limited to one preset uh from the text and then one application of an image at a time. Okay. Yeah. And can you rename the preset later? Yes, you can. That's a great point. So you can do that. What you would do is you uh, well, actually, what you would probably do is create a new preset if you wanted to rename it. But if you wanted to change it, like let's say I wanted to um, update my proof Zapfino, I can click this update button, and that's going to update that particular preset that is highlighted. If you wanted to rename it, what you would probably do is just create a new one and then um, delete the old one. Yeah, definitely. All right. Um, and then there was a question about diagonal text. So right now, you know, you can flip it, you can't do a diagonal, but if you've had your text already at a diagonal as an image, you could certainly bring it in as a diagonal. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep, so, and that's the beauty of the image capability is that any anything that you create somewhere else, um, again, like let's say it's specific branding like this, or it's the word proof, or it's just your name, it could be, you know, diagonally oriented somewhere else, and then when you bring it in, um, you you have these capabilities, but you can't. There's no like free rotate. It's just the 90 degree rotation built into the watermark feature here. Okay. 
And Dan, I do want to thank you for showing you the showing us the texture, being able to add an image and then use some blending modes to actually make it like a texture or kind of a ghost in the background. Absolutely. Um, and that that could be a cooler representation. So here I actually, you know, I overlaid a portrait on top of this sort of shady walkway. Uh, if you had, let's say, the a photograph of um, a, a cracked cement wall or um, a photograph of wood or, uh, you know, leather or something like that, that could be a really cool way of overlaying texture on top of your image. I didn't have any available when I sort of thought about this right ahead of time because I was like, well, what's a cool feature that you could do? Um, but I didn't have a, one of those ready. So. Okay. Well, let's see here. I think that we... Uh covered it. I do want to remind folks too that when you're importing these um, watermarks, this should be a JPEG or a PNG file. PNG is recommended, so I know there's a question about that. Um, Matthew, one last question, is asking, is there a minimum size resolution for a graphic you create elsewhere and then add to PhotoLab? I don't think there's a minimum size, but you will see a quality difference if you start to, if you, if you have let's say a 300 pixel by 300 pixel logo, and then you place it on a, a large resolution image and you scale it up, it's not going to hold up. It's not gonna look very good. So this is actually a pretty big version of that logo. Um, and so as I scale it up to 100, it still looks pretty good. Um, if it were a small representation, it wouldn't look nearly as good. Yeah. But I don't think there's a minimum, it just, it is based upon how big or small you want to overlay the thing. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, well, I think that wraps it up. Dan, thank you again for a great presentation and everyone for joining us today. And Dan, I'll go ahead and let you close out the webinar. Yeah, thank you very much, Laura. Yeah, that was fun. I, I love this stuff. I, I thank you guys for joining today. I hope this was a beneficial demonstration and you learned a whole bunch about the watermark feature within PhotoLab 4. Uh, all right. Thanks again, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope to see you again soon for our next set of webinars. Thanks. Bye.